Hello. In the comments on the buoyancy video the other day, there was uh, somebody was saying something about making an airfoil, and I replied that you couldn't really do that very well without using particles. So that sort of gave me the idea to try making a wind tunnel in Box 2D, and let me first acknowledge that there's not a very good way to make a wind tunnel. I think if you're using um, a gas, if you're trying to simulate the gas, I think uh, you can use grid-based methods to um, get a lot more accurate and fast simulations. So this is just for fun. Um, and what we have here is um, a dynamic body in the middle there, and this dynamic body is joined to the ground with a motor joint, which is a new joint, and it has a target position and rotation for this body in the middle and the motor joint will uh, try and push this body to keep it at the same place and rotation. And then over on the left here we have a kinematic body which shuttles backwards and forth, left and right, and as it does so, every five time steps I think, a row of little circles will be pushed into the scene, and they have uh, zero gravity and they have a quite a strong um, linear damping but they're very light and they have a little yellow marker showing their last 10 positions in the world so that just helps us visualize where they're moving and they all get pushed across the screen so we can uh, see that like this and when they hit the dynamic body body in the middle, they all move around it. And when they get to the right side of the screen, as soon as they touch the uh, fixture on the right, they just get teleported back over here to do it all over again. <coughs> so <coughs> the nice thing about the motor joint is that it has a function that lets you check how much force it's using to keep this body in the middle in place. Uh, so I'm taking the sideways and the vertical, horizontal and vertical components of that and I'm measuring them every time step and I'm keeping that up here as the drag and lift values for horizontal and vertical forces respectively. And I can also use the keyboard to change the angle of attack of this airfoil in the middle. So that's the... the uh, numbers we have up here at the top. So at the moment we are at 0 degrees and we have a drag of 0 0.21 and a lift of around about 0. And up here in the top I have three graphs and <coughs> there's nothing much in there at the moment. Um, but what we have is this is a 0, 0 position and towards the right we have positive angle of attack and vertically going up here we have higher forces and the red dots are drag and the green dots are lift so they're actually getting updated right now although it's a little bit hard to see but you can see them moving a little bit and they are uh, updating according to the last the average of the last 100 readings for the drag and the lift so they, they do tend to move around a little bit. Anyway, what we can do is change the angle of attack. And I'm just going to turn those little ball displays off because this PC um, tends to get a bit slow. I, <laughs> I think most, most PCs would tend to run this a little bit slow, um, which is why the balls are larger than I would have liked. I mean, obviously you want them as small as, as you can but it gets unreasonably slow. Anyway, so I'll just change the angle of attack here. So we're at 10 degrees, 25, and the lines are color coded to go a little bit red when they slow down. So we can see here that behind the airfoil now we have uh, an area of slow movement. And if we go back up to our graph here we can see 
Now we are at 38 degrees, so remember this is going from 0 to 90 over there. So we're at 38, and the drag and the lift are sort of going up at about the same rate. Um, and now we can see that the dots in this area are updating every time step. So if you were going to run this to get a nicer graph, you would do it a lot slower so that you can get an average of more readings. Um, I'm not going to do that in this video because it takes a long time, but we have some screenshots here that I did earlier. And this is for the airfoil that we're looking at at the moment. So you can see the drag goes up and up and up. And the lift goes up to a certain point and then it starts to go back down again. So um, this is fairly accurate to what we should expect. And if you want to look into all this stuff, this is the graph that we would expect. And they have the same, almost the same colors, red for drag and blue for lift. Um, so yeah, I, don't, I think this is a reasonably good result. Oops, uh, this one. And I have another couple of graphs here. These are for the other two aerofoils, um, which we'll have a look at in a second. So they didn't turn out to be as different as I'd hoped. Um, this one here is the most efficient one, or the, the best one for actually lifting something like an airplane, because I think the gap here between the lift and the drag is is what you want if you're trying to, you know, fly a plane. Um, so you can um, run this yourself and try them out, but uh, this is just another screenshot of all these um, graphs side by side. So back to the uh, demo. This airfoil, uh, as we can see, is a symmetrical one, so it doesn't really give us... Oh, sorry. We've skipped on to the next one. So the, the one we had just before was symmetrical. This one is the second one that was quite good. It had good results for lift. And there's also a third one, which is um, cambered. So the bottom is not flat. It sort of curves in there near the tail. And I thought this one was going to be the best one for lift, but actually it turned out that the second one, the... this one was actually the best. So anyway, you can uh, get the source code for this on the iForce 2D website, so go and check it out. Thank you.